Hi everyone, I'm Darth Bribe, and welcome to my review of Avengers Age of Ultron, the most anticipated sequel of this year. Okay, except that. Yeah. Episode 7, please be great. Please be great, because Age of Ultron is a good, solid, well-written, well-acted movie that Joss Whedon put together pretty damn well, given the circumstances. However, it's a bit of a disappointment for me. Why? Maybe this is me having the highest of expectations from Joss Whedon. Now why would you say, well why do you have such high standards for Joss Whedon? Well, because he gave me Toy Story 1, which pretty much has shaped my life in a lot of ways. Now, I bought the poster, so I clearly do like this film. But, it's not what I was expecting. Now what were my expectations? The Empire Strikes Back, and Toy Story 2. Both of these sequels are better than their predecessors. Both of these films are considered two of the greatest sequels of all time. Both of these films are two of my favorite sequels ever. They both flesh out their protagonists incredibly well, and they explore a more serious slash darker tone to the film. Now, in terms of the darker tone of the film, Age of Ultron does this very well, and I do think Ultron is a superior villain than Loki, but I'm beating around the bush here. What's the plot of this film? The plot of Age of Ultron is that it's, a, it's like a few months after the events of Winter Soldier. If you don't know anything about Captain America and Winter Soldier, see that video, then see this video, and then you'll know what the fuck I'm talking about. Okay? You see that video right there? Good. Now we can get on to this. Now it begins with the Avengers hunting down all the Hydra bases that are left. Them beating them up, stopping them. Pretty much they're going to get Loki's staff after the events of the previous film. And you hear the typical banter between the Avengers, Thor, Iron Man, Captain America, Black Widow, Bruce Banner, Hard Guy. You all get this feeling that these guys are pals and they trust each other. Which is just great. And it's great to see our pals back again. It's like us seeing Woody and Buzz again in Toy Story 2, or us seeing Luke, Han, and Leia again in The Empire Strikes Back. It does that very well, and Whedon has definitely done his homework from studying those great films, and studying The Godfather 2. Now, another thing that's great about this scene is that we get introduced to Quicksilver and the Scarlet Witch. And they're not Magneto's kids in this version, they're fucking... Enhanced, as Captain America calls him, and Cap has a funny scene, which kind of becomes a running joke in the film, which I do love, when he says to Iron Man, language, and Iron Man says, wait, is no one going to address that Cap just said language? It's too perfect, and they bust his balls about it, it's too great for words. Iron Man goes into Baron Von Strucker's lair, and he gets Loki stat. But in the middle of that, Scarlet Witch gets into his head and gives him a vision of him fucking up everything. That it's all his fault. And he sees Captain America dying and, and Cap grabs Tony and says, You could have saved us. Ugh. And it's just this brilliant use of fear. And in a way, hints at Tony's PTSD from Iron Man 3. I do like how Whedon is trying to make Phase 2 worth it. Because, let's be honest, Phase 2, unlike Phase 1, has been, eh, here and there, except for Winter Soldier, which is fucking great. Now, they introduce a new element here that I'm still not a fan of, even after seeing this movie twice. The Hulk and Black Widow romance. In my opinion, this seems like some that Joss Whedon was bored one day and decided to go on DeviantArt just to see which ships were popular. And it just feels weird. I, I don't know how else to describe it except weird. This romance is weird. And while 
the romance of this film between Hulk and Black Widow does have the dialogue of a Han and Leia type romance. As just a fan of these characters, it doesn't work. May it work in the film version as these characters are portrayed? Yes. Yeah. And do I get the argument of, well, look at the first film. They were kind of playing the seeds of that, which were nice, but I always took that as a flirting, a, like a good friend, good comrade moment. I always could kind of see her more with Captain America or just not have her have a love interest at all. However, with that said, it is played out fairly well. Because at the end of the movie, when, when Hulk leaves, I cried. But maybe that's because I was having the Lonely Man theme playing in my head from the old TV series. Now, another thing I do love about this movie is how everything is just pushed to the next fucking level. Tony Stark creates Ultron, a peacekeeping project with Bruce Banner, and he's freaking out and a bit paranoid, and it's like, we're mad scientists, we gotta do this. We gotta create Ultron, this peacekeeping thing to basically make the Avengers useless. To create world peace. Now, the brilliant use of Ultron, in my opinion, is that Ultron is the evil Tony Stark. And yes, I know it's not loaded to the comics, because Ant-Man does create Ultron. Nevertheless, it's done pretty damn well here. And I love how Ultron is the Frankenstein monster to Tony Stark's Dr. Frankenstein. He created Ultron as a means to keep peace. And pretty much like Frankenstein's monster, Ultron resents and despises everything about Tony in this film. And it's so good. And the dialogue they give Ultron, it's very much like a Darth Vader type character. And I fucking love that. And Aaron Taylor Johnson as Quicksilver is great. Is he as good as the guy from X-Men Days of Future Past? Eh, I would say yes. I love both actors in the role. Now the one thing I do absolutely love about this film is how they introduced Scarlet Witch. This woman is a badass. She's strong, she's interesting, she's dark, she's mysterious. And it's nice to see how we have two female superheroes or a female who's kind of like the antagonist turned good later on in the film. I'm just gonna fucking say it. You probably know me. Look at my wall. My favorite scene in this movie is when we explore Black Widow's past through flashbacks. Now, as a fan of Black Widow, I would have loved to have seen more of this flashback. I would have loved to have seen more of this red room. I would have loved to have seen us go into Black Widow's dark side, to her Timothy Dalton Bond, you know, moments of anger and regret and pain and suffering. It's all really well done. Now, when Scarlet Witch gets in the Cap's head, it's nah. When she gets in the Thor's head, oh my fucking god. It's chilling, it's dark, it's foreboding and mysterious. And I think dark is a kind of perfect way I can describe this film. It's dark at a way where I think the MCU can kind of take this darker turn now. Where we've seen kind of the lightheartedness and now we can move on to a deeper and slightly darker universe. Not Dark Knight trilogy levels of dark, but dark in that Spider-Man 2-esque dark. Or what I kind of wish Spider-Man 3 had! Nevertheless, now, the one thing that does kind of bother me about this movie is when Hulk freaks out and attacks everyone, which is very much like Hulk. It's the out-of-control, the angry rage monster. But it's like, what the hell was Hulk seeing? Now, I know there's an extended cut. I know there is an extended cut. But come on, Whedon. I would have loved to have seen what was going on in Banner's mind when Scarlet Witch gets in his head. It would have been amazing for us to see a point of view shot of the 2008 Hulk film where he sees Betty Ross in his arms, or maybe Black Widow, dying because he's the Hulk. And he sees this and he just... Like that. It would have been a perfect way for us to explore more of Banner's psyche than we got in the 2008 film. Now, the action sequences in this film are amazing. The Hulk and Iron Man fight is just incredible. It's way better than the fights in Man of Steel, and I do enjoy the shit out of Man of Steel. But I'll give Whedon the thumbs up here because this man knows how to film action sequences. And speaking of the cinematography in this movie, it is 
gorgeous. The cinematography in this film is breathtaking. The way he gets these aerial shots, the way he's able to get these POV shots, it's, oh, as a photographer, I could orgasm over these amazing shots, and I envy we did skills as a photographer, as a director, and I envy the cinematographer this, damn you, sir, god damn, you're brilliant, this film should be nominated for best cinematography, I'm just gonna say it right there, because of how well it uses its camera work, oh, you gotta just see the movie to see the beautiful camera shots, now, we all know this movie has so much shit in it, from the standpoint of a big movie like this, in a runtime that probably isn't the most appropriate runtime for this type of film, yes, I know it's over two hours and 25 minutes long, nevertheless, I could have bought more into a two hour and 44 minute film if it needed to be that long. I would have been fine with it, because I do love these characters. I love seeing their interaction. Before I say anything else, they introduce Vision. Now, I'm a Marvel guy. I love Marvel. I have a Stan Lee book where he pretty much talked about the Vision. But I never thought we would see a live-action version of the Vision. And Paul Bettany as Vision, it's so perfect. It is just amazing. His performance in this film is great. And I'll just say right here, everyone's performance in Age of Ultron is great. Everyone gives it their all in this movie. No one's shoehorning it in. James Spader, like, say, James Gerald Jones, has a great menacing voice and really gives you that threat, that impending doom that our hero must face. He does that so fucking well. I can't deny that. But with that said, I think the biggest problem with this film is that it feels like a bit of a mess. Now, out of the mess superhero movie, it's definitely better than the competition. Spider-Man 3, Amazing Spider-Man 2, X-Men 3. It's certainly the best out of that. But it's unfortunately nowhere near as good as the first film. And I do sympathize with Whedon because he was under a lot of stress. And... He really put, he really worked his ass off to get this movie done, and he felt like the studio was breathing down his neck. Now, I don't really know if the Hulk and Banner, the Banner and Romanoff romance was a studio decision or a Whedon decision, but nevertheless, in the end, while I wasn't a big fan of it in the beginning and the second time around, I did kind of buy into it at the very end where Hulk left Black Widow alone. And I do respect Whedon how he said, you know what, we have a romance, but these characters are better off alone. And I think that was the real tragic element of it. So overall, I would give Age of Ultron a very high 8.5 out of 10. It is one hell of a theatrical experience, and it is well worth a viewing in the theater. If you don't see this movie in the theater, you're a fucking idiot in my opinion. Don't skip on this theatrical experience. But as a sequel to the first Avengers film and something as groundbreaking and kind of arguably important as that, it's not an Empire Strikes Back, and it's not a Toy Story 2, unfortunately. Live long and prosper and have a great day.